Microsoft Link makes scheduling a meeting easy. You quickly get people together and exchange information with just a few clicks. Let's say I need to meet with Diane and Ken to talk about the project plan that we've been working on. This is a short informal meeting and I need everyone to join as a presenter so they can share their screens and upload documents. For this type of meeting, I'll use the default options because they're optimized for smaller meetings. First, I'll go to my calendar view in Outlook and select the day and time I want to schedule my meeting. Then I'll click New Online Meeting. Now I'll add Diane and Ken and click Scheduling Assistant to check their availability. Looks like they're both open, so I'll go back to the appointment page. I need a subject for my meeting. How about training project plan? A great thing about online meetings is that I don't have to find a conference room, so I'll leave the location as online meeting. All I'm missing now is my meeting agenda. I'll just type one in here above the dotted line so I don't accidentally change any of the meeting information. And I'll double check the information and click send. And I'm done. If you want to schedule a meeting on behalf of someone else, such as your manager or coworker, you need to be set up as their delegate. For example, my new manager Chloe needs to meet frequently with customers and most of the time those meetings are online. Hi Chloe. Hey Diane. Could you do me a favor and schedule an online meeting for later this week with the Litware people? You bet. Just set me up as a delegate in your calendar and in link. Uh, okay. Care to walk me through that? Sure. Just go to the File tab in Outlook and click Account Settings and Delegate Access. Add my name. And give me editor permission for your calendar. You may want to check the option for Outlook send me an email with the information as well. Okay, got it. Now what? Now add me as a delegate and link. Click Options, then click Call Forwarding. Don't worry, I won't be getting your calls. We're just going to add my name as a delegate. Okay, I'm there. Now click Edit My Delegate Members and add my name. And that's it. Got it. Now what? All I need to do now is to add your calendar in Outlook and schedule a meeting just like I'm scheduling one for myself. Any particular day this week you want the meeting set? Any open time I have on Thursday or Friday would be good. You've got it. I'll pick the time and click New Online Meeting. I can even change your meeting options for you if you want. Will people know the request is from me? Oh yes, the invitation says that the meeting request was sent by me on your behalf. Thanks. No problem. With Link 2010, you can modify your options for a larger audience for a smooth and easy way to manage meetings. Say you're presenting to a large group of people, like more than 10, and you don't want them to mess with your slides or change any of the other options in your meeting while you're presenting. Here's what you do. First, schedule the meeting like you'd do with any other meeting. Open Outlook and go to Calendar View to select the date and time of your meeting. Then click New Online Meeting on the Outlook ribbon. Add your participants in the two box. Remember that you can invite up to 250 people, including yourself. Type your meeting subject and double check the date and time. You can leave the meeting location as online meeting or add a conference room to the location box if you have people attending in person. And don't forget to add your meeting agenda above the dotted line. Now it's time to customize your meeting options so you have more control over your meeting. Click meeting options right here. What you need to do here is let everyone bypass the lobby so you're not interrupted by their requests during the meeting. And also select a few presenters who'll be running the meeting with you. Here's how. Check Customize Access and Presenters for this meeting. Then select the last two options under Access, these two right here. This way, people get into your meeting directly and you won't have to admit them manually. No interruptions and the meeting flows nicely. Now add your presenters. Select Peep I Choose and then click Manage Presenters. Everyone you invite is by default an attendee. All you need to do is click the names of your presenters and click Add to move them to the other side and click OK. 
Keep in mind that all presenters have full control over your meeting. One thing here, you cannot add external attendees, that is, people outside your company, to the presenters list. External attendees can still be presenters, but you have to do it manually after the meeting has started. Almost finished. Just double check your invitation to make sure everything looks good, then hit send, and done! You can quickly join an online meeting even if you don't have Link installed. If you can view a web page, you can join a Link meeting. Two special applications, Link Web App and Link Attendee, are helpful for external partners who are invited to Link meetings, as well as employees who are not at their usual computer at meeting time or have not yet upgraded to Link 2010. Let's take a look. With Link ND, all of the in-meeting features are available to you, including PC audio, video, participant list, desktop and application sharing, give and take control, and other meeting collaboration features such as PowerPoint presentation, whiteboard, polling, and file sharing. It takes only a couple of minutes to install Link Attendee. Once it's installed, go ahead and start it by clicking Join Online Meeting in the invitation. Enter your network credentials. Now if you're joining a meeting as an external user, meaning you don't have an account with the company that is organizing the meeting, select Join as Guest. You'll be directed to the link lobby and then admitted to the meeting by the meeting organizer. So click Join, select an audio option, and log into your meeting. So I'm in, and Link Attendee made it easy. With the other application, Link Web App, there's nothing to install. Link Web App is a browser-based version of Link that lets you join online meetings using Windows or Macintosh operating systems. Let's say you're not able to install Attendee at the moment, but you need to get to the meeting quickly. You'll probably want to use Link Web App. Using Link Web App, you can share your desktop, use the whiteboard, and see a list of attendees. However, you won't be able to add video, use computer audio, or upload PowerPoint presentations. So think of Link Web App as a light version of Link Attendee. As with Link Attendee, you start Link Web App by clicking Join Online Meeting in the invitation. Click Join the Meeting using your web browser. Enter your corporate credentials and log into the meeting. When you're in the meeting, click the phone tab and either dial the number manually on your phone or have Link call you. With Microsoft Link, I can join an online meeting from anywhere, using only my computer. I don't even have to be on my corporate network. As long as I have access to the internet, I'm all set. When it's time to log into my meeting, I'll open the invitation in Outlook and click Join Online Meeting. Link gives me different options for audio. The one I use most is Link Integrated Audio and Video. This option lets me use my PC's microphone and speakers, or a headset, and automatically open the call for the audience. It's a good idea to check your audio settings for volume and quality. It only takes a few seconds, and it makes for a better meeting experience. During the meeting, I can use the audio controls to mute or unmute myself, adjust the speaker volume, or even change my audio device. Okay, now let's go back and take a quick look at the other audio options. Now what about this one? Do not join audio. Why would you not want to join your meeting audio? Well, let's say you want to call into the meeting from a phone instead of using your computer. Maybe your computer audio devices aren't working correctly, or you're running your meeting from a conference room podium. You can also use this option if your company does not support integrated audio, in which case you would have to dial in using a telephone. When the call window opens, click Join Information in Meeting Options. Call the dial-in number and enter your conference ID. 
Welcome to the Audio Conferencing Center. You can enter a conference ID followed by the pound sign at any time. If you're a presenter, you can manage your meeting audio and the audience by using the touch tone commands. For example, use star 4 to mute or unmute the audience, or star 8 to admit people from the lobby. If you are an attendee, you can also use the commands to mute or unmute yourself, or find out who else is in attendance. Now there's one more audio option we need to look at. Instead of calling into the meeting, you can have Link call you at any of your available numbers, or you can specify a different number. With this option, you don't need to know the conference ID or PIN. Link calls you at the number you selected and automatically opens the call for the audience. With this option, you can still use the touch tone commands to manage the meeting audio. With Link, you're always connected. With Microsoft Link, you are in complete control of your meetings and presentations. You control access, run the meeting, and decide how to manage the participants. If you're scheduling a large meeting, say, more than 10 people, or if you have meeting participants from outside your company, it's a good idea to modify the meeting options. Let's get started. Open Outlook and go to the Calendar view to select the day and time of your meeting. Click New Online Meeting. Add your participants. And give the meeting a subject. Then if you want, you can add a meeting agenda above the dotted line here. Now let's look at the options. Click Meeting Options up here. Then put a check mark here to enable all these options below. Now, even though I have several options here, I really only need to make two decisions. Who has access to the meeting and who will present. Just those two. Let's start with access. You can view these options from top to bottom as most secure to least secure. For example, this one up here is for when you have sensitive information to discuss and you want to tightly control who is coming to your meeting. Everyone who joins the meeting is put into a virtual lobby and you as the organizer can accept or deny participants as you want. Now you might think, well, if I don't want someone at the meeting, I just won't invite them, which is true. But keep in mind that anyone who gets an invitation can forward it to other people. Also, any distribution list you send the invitation to might have been recently modified to include people who you don't intend to invite. So for total control over access, choose this first option up here. Now this last option down here is the least secure option. Everyone gets into your meeting automatically, including people who are outside your company. There's no waiting in the lobby. As long as they have your meeting link, they can join the meeting. And if you select this box, this free access will apply to anyone dialing in by phone as well. And as you can see from their descriptions, these other two here are mid-level access. Now let's look at presenters. Once again, these go from most control to least control, except this last one here and we'll get to that in a minute. Now this meeting I'm creating is for a few dozen people and for meetings that large, I like to choose this top option, organizer only. This gives me complete control over the meeting and my content. Everyone else will be able to view my PowerPoint and the whiteboard if I use one, but I'm the only one who can control those features. Of course, if I change my mind later, I can go back in and make any of the participants a presenter after I logged into my meeting. In smaller, less formal meetings, I usually go with this one. Three people, everyone can collaborate, everyone has control. It works out well. So we have a large meeting but want a few specific people to be presenters. That's go down here. Click people I choose, click Manage presenters, and then use your presenters. Just remember that you cannot select external people to be presenters using this option. But don't worry, you can make them presenters once you are logged into the meeting if you need to. So that you can create any combination of these options depending on your particular needs. Now your page here, audio and phone. If you're meeting participants who won't be using Link, maybe they're away from the office and dialing in from their cell phone, Go here and select the local number for the location from which most of your participants dial in. 
The location you choose here will determine which dial-in number appears in the invitation. Now be sure that all participants will be able to dial in if they want, regardless of where they happen to be. All they do is open the invitation and click for the local number. Lasting, if you, you can save these options so that they're already set for any future meetings. Just click Remember Settings down here. Oops, you can always come back and change the settings anytime you want. With Microsoft Link, I can join a Link meeting even without a computer. All I need is the conference number, conference ID, and if I'm a presenter, my personal identification number, or PIN. If I'm just attending the meeting and not presenting, I don't need a PIN. Let's say I'm traveling to the airport to catch a flight, but I need to join a meeting that's happening right now. Back at the office, I took note of the conferencing phone number and ID from the meeting invitation. I'll just dial the number. Welcome to the Audio Conferencing Center. You can enter a conference ID followed by the pound sign at any time. I can manage my meeting audio using my telephone keypad. There are different options for presenters and attendees. For example, an attendee can mute or unmute their phone. But as a presenter, I can do things like unlock the conference and admit all participants. I can also play a list of the commands by pressing star 1 on my phone. Because I'm a presenter, I'll need to enter my PIN. And that's it! I'm in! In working with different teams distributed across the world, it's really important for everyone to be able to join meetings no matter where they're located. Luckily, Link provides international conferencing numbers that people can use if they need to dial into the meeting instead of using computer audio. For example, let's say I'm in Paris week. I'm not really in Paris, but just say I am. So now that I'm here in Paris, uh, when I need to dial into meetings, I can just locate the international conference dial -in number for France and dial in. Here, I'll show you. There's a find a local number link in the invitation, and it goes directly to the dial-in conferencing page where all the international numbers are listed. I find the number for Paris, dial-in, and then enter the conference ID for the meeting to join the audio. It only takes me a few seconds to connect, and I can even choose a French-speaking operator if I want to. Après le ton, veuillez enregistrer votre nom. 